Uh, Mildred, I mean, explain to us, please, I mean, a 300-year-old business model, probably largely unchanged in its broad principles. Explain to us how Lloyd's actually works. Well, um, first of all, thank you all very much. Nick, thank you. Where are we? Are we over here? Thank you very much for the invitation to come here this morning. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, as Nick said, I, I've been many times to South Africa, rather more quite a long time ago than, than recently, but uh, it, it's quite extraordinary to see what has been happening in this country. Um, but Lloyd's, I mean, Lloyd's, uh, Lloyd's is certainly well over 300 years old. Uh, I don't think it's right to say the business models hardly <laughs> changed. Um, you see, you Mr. moved from a coffee shop to a big well, office. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, exactly. Yeah. Well, <coughs> Mr. Lloyd was actually the Starbucks of his day. Um, <laughs> I don't think, well, in fact, I know he didn't know anything about insurance at all, so our business model has, has changed uh, somewhat. But it is, it is unique, and uh, quite often I, my job is going around, around the world promoting uh, Lloyd's because um, our business is 75% outside of the UK, and uh, we have to keep explaining to people what we're doing and, and how we're doing. And very often I'm, I'm being given some notes and they say, well, you can say we're the largest insurance market in the world. It's not true. We're not the largest insurance market in the world. We're the only insurance market in the world. Uh, the Americans tried to set one up in New York about 20 years ago and it was a resounding flop. Um, the, Governor of New York three years ago decided he was going to do it again, and we said we'd help him. Um, I have to say that was a, that never even got off the ground. Uh, the Chinese said, uh, and we are very busy in China, the Chinese said they were going to set one up in Shanghai six months ago, and then I went to see them, and they said, well, we don't know whose idea that was, but we're not going to do it either. Um, so I, I think our business model has changed dramatically, but we're still a one-off. And... If you think about it, our total um, worldwide business is around 35 billion US dollars. Our biggest market in the world is in the United States. And even in the United States, we are a very big player, which is, when you think about it, very strange to have this quirky, bizarre UK institution, because we're not a company. People say, how's your insurance company today? I say, we're not a company. Um, we have lots of companies in the market. So it, it is a very, very unusual model. But if it's lasted for over 300 years and um, there isn't anything else like it in the world, uh, we've got to be doing something right. I, explain to me how it works. There are one okay. or two names in the audience, and I uh, know, know somebody who was once a name who's no longer a name, uh, not through any fault of Lloyd's, but it's uh, more of a mortality issue. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, let, let me explain how it works. Originally... And I won't go back to the sort of long time ago history, but in more recent years, Lloyd's um, was a market in which uh, underwriters formed syndicates of individuals who backed those syndicates with their uh, assets, with their wealth, so that the syndicates could underwrite policies, um, they got the premium income, and uh, if there were claims, they paid it from the premium income, and to ensure that they could be claimed, uh, they could be paid, uh, the syndicates had these assets as, as backup to make sure they were available. That went on for a very long time and was very successful. Until about 30 years ago, um, the model started to fall apart because a couple of things happened which were dramatic. Um, the biggest one of all was asbestos. And you know quite a lot about asbestos in this country. In fact, I had a very good friend here years ago who grew up living next to an asbestos mine and who died very, very early <coughs> from cancer, which of course was uh, uh, as a result of living close to the asbestos. And Lloyd's, in all the business that it wrote, wrote property insurance and Crudely, you know, you had a building, you insured it, and as long as it stayed up, it was fine. If it fell down, you had to pay for it. Um, and within the policy, hidden away in the depths of the wording, um, it was shown that if there was something there which had caused people to be sick, um, then the 
they, they could claim against the policy. Nobody even thought about asbestos. I mean, it was like saying, you know, the house is made of brick, so what? I mean, what does that got to do with it? Anyway, that, sadly, grew into such an enormous series of claims that <clears throat> many of the names, and I'll explain what they were in a minute, were, were wiped out. And names is just a sort of uh, in-house code word for the individuals who subscribed their name to the policy. And so they benefited from the years when the syndicate did well. And um, they had to pay out when the syndicate was doing less well. But the, the scale of the claims that hit them was out of all proportion. And um, they were brought in on the basis you came in, you subscribed your name to the policy, and um, you expected uh, to get rather a nice check at the end of the year. And also, because of the way it was uh, uh, constructed, uh, it was a very tax efficient way of, um, of running your life and, and of, of using your assets twice, in fact, because you, you had to pledge them, but you could still use them uh, in other ways. <coughs> 